What's up everybody, Logan Hanks here, and today we're gonna dive in on the four keys to growing big bucks on your place. First one is nutrition. A buck can only get so big if he's got the right amount of stuff pumping in. I mean, you gotta have the proper amounts of protein and things for the deer to grow. And that's where uh, there's, I mean, there's countless plots today. What are the different ones? There's uh, I mean, the various clovers and things. It's easy for me, a farm. So corn, soybeans, and wheat, uh, all of those are simple for me because I plant them anyways. But uh, the deer really love corn and they really love soybeans, especially early in the year. They'll absolutely eat the tops and tear up soybeans. I don't think you could go wrong with planting. If you got access to a plot of some uh, beans you could do, plant you some soybeans. Or, uh, you know, get you some good mixes. There's radishes, like I said, radish, clover. Uh, I've had a lot of good luck out of oats. Um, you need that nutrition in there because they got to have that in order to grow. I've seen some studies where they actually took a buck. I think he was like three and a half and he was like a 120 inch buck. And then they took him from there and moved him to a completely different area where he had an abundance in nutrition. And he went from like a 120 to like a 160. So he gained 40 inches in one year span. Now, that might not be typical, but that's just saying the nutrition plays a part and it plays a, a large part in it. So you need your nutrition on point. And uh, some of the long game stuff, uh, persimmon trees, apple trees, uh, things like that. Deer love those and that's more in the nutrition and this kind of will tie in with the key number two, which is the habitat. You got to have the habitat to hold these deer. And, you know, like I said, it ties in with number one. To hold them there, you need the nutrition. So nutrition and habitat, they go hand in hand. And uh, that's when you do things like hinge cutting. You know, you need some growth and some stuff. The deer got to have a place to hide because we're not the only predators after them. You know, there's coyotes, there's all kinds of stuff actively trying to kill the deer as well. So they need protection and that. A deer, they're looking for water, food, protection, and pretty much to reproduce. That's more or less what a deer does. And uh, if you can provide the necessary habitat for that, you know, I recommend doing some hinge cutting, going out. Um, if you don't know what to do, there are some great videos. QDMA has a lot of good stuff on hinge cutting that I recommend. Um, and do that. I mean, like I said, provide the cover for the deer too. Uh, and like on the habitat side, don't also kind of on your part, don't pound the habitat. I'm a big fan of boots on the ground, but you want to treat it somewhat as a sanctuary for the deer because they need to feel safe. The safer a deer feels in that habitat, the less likely they are to venture off of that habitat. And I've seen that firsthand with my own experience. And uh, I mean, I've had deer that had gone completely nocturnal due to pressure from people. I left that area, pretty much went completely out of it. And he came back and I was able to take him. So the habitat, that one's also key. Number three, and this is one that, uh, you know, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that you can do about it, and that is genetics. A humongous monster buck, he's probably got some good genes. I mean, uh, kind of, I guess I should have hit on this more in nutrition. I'm going to be honest with you, the minerals and things you put out, you know, I'm not saying that they don't help some. But realistically, they're not going to grow it unless you have like a complete deer farm where you can completely supplement their feeding and put out like twice a day feedings of this high protein feed for them. Then your your bag you're dumping out, it's probably not going to make a huge difference in the rack growth of that deer. But genetics is pretty imperative for a big buck. You know, it's we could be talking the difference between you might have a buck that tops out at 140 inches and uh, there might be another one with stronger genetics and he might top out at 170 inches. And unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do with that. Uh, that's just 
the hand that they were dealt uh, through Mother Nature. And like I said, it's just not a lot you can do to change that. But I mean, a 140 inch deer is still a good deer. You still need to try to push and get the maximum out of the genetics that you can. And that's gonna be through proper habitat and proper nutrition. And that would be like say, maximizing the genes and the genetics that are available to you. Now the fourth one, and this one might step on some toes here. Now this whole series right here, I'm not attacking the meat eater guy that's like, I only, I, you can't eat the horns, man. You know, I, I hear him say that all the time. First of all, it is antlers, they're not horns. But anyways, um, it's, it's okay to be just purely in it for the meat. You know, but on the same hand, it's also okay to be a trophy hunter because as a trophy hunter, I still eat the meat. Uh, it's not that I'm wasting the meat. I just also am hunting that extra challenge of the trophy. And that's what I want to touch on on this last one. This one's for the guy that is pursuing that challenge of the bigger bucks and mature bucks. If you've ever made the remark, I can't let that buck walk because my neighbor will shoot it. Unfortunately, man, <laughs> you might be the neighbor. Um, I've taken that chance a lot and I've let a lot of deer walk and actually I've had, I have had a couple that my neighbors did kill and I've actually had quite a few that my neighbors did not kill and I've even later talked to my neighbors and found out that they even let that deer walk. So had I have shot that deer with that mentality, I would have been the neighbor. Don't be the neighbor. That's the fourth key. Do not be the neighbor. Let the deer walk. It's a chance you got to take. And I'm telling you, it is worth it. It's well worth it. I let a buck walk uh, in 2018 that was probably already a 150 inch deer. And people thought I was crazy. And I let him walk and got to kill him this past year. 2019, I killed him. He was 160 inch. He gained 10 more inches. And uh, come to find out, he was actually still only a four and a half year old deer. I actually thought he was a, a, at least, I was thinking five and a half. Um, because the crazy thing about it is, I mean, scoring 160 at four and a half, they actually say that a deer puts on his most growth between five and seven years of age, typically. They can put like a 20 inch bump or more in a year in five to seven, or in that earlier study that I referenced where they had the proper nutrition and everything, they might put on 40 inches. I mean, something crazy. I do, I can't help but think that it's pretty wild to think that that four and a half year old I killed could have potentially been like a 180 inch deer in another year or two. Um, now, at, at 160, I was ready to take that deer. I mean, he was big bodied, big deer, big rack, just a nice deer. And I mean, it's still, for my area, four and a half, still a mature buck. But uh, you got to stop killing the one and a halfs and the two and a half year olds. And realistically, the three and a halfs. And if you really want to get hardcore, not even the four and a halfs. Like I said, I, I actually thought that deer was older than he was. Um, getting up into the five to seven year range is probably when you're going to get the bucks at their maximum. That is easier said than done. And it requires a lot of patience and somewhat of insanity because you'll let deer walk. I mean, letting a 150 walk uh, in 2018 was not easy because you're sitting there like, this is a 150, this is still a phenomenal buck, but I, I wanna see what he can do. And that's a chance you gotta take. So again, just to recap, you need the proper nutrition. There's a corn plot that we do. We do one every year for the deer. Doesn't have to be overly complicated either. Like I said, this is just corn. We put it out here. Uh, the one thing I do want to touch on, because right over there, you can't see it in the video, there's a little pond. And so water is very important to the deer. And somebody might be watching and being like, well, man, I don't even have, I have no ponds or anything on my property. So what am I just doomed? And uh, I mean, deer are really simple. They're a lot like us in a lot of ways. They need food and they need water to survive. And uh, those things are things you can help to provide. The water aspect, what can you do if you don't have it? One thing that I've seen a lot of people do, you can get like the tub at a tractor supply or somewhere, a hardware store, 
like a big trough basically and you dig a hole and you pretty much you bury that and uh the deer can get in there and it'll fill up with water or you can fill it up with water uh the, i think there's some companies now that actually make some stuff you can put in there to keep the water kind of clean because the biggest worry would be that becoming like a stagnant little swamp basically but uh, i think there are some companies that make some stuff you can put it in there there are i say that to say there are solutions for you even if you do not have an actual like water hole on the place so look into things like that again qdma is going to have some good information on that um, but you can put in water but i just wanted to show like i said this is a corn plot we had it's pretty much been annihilated by now it's uh feb it's actually march 2nd today the, you'd be hard pressed to even find any corn left in this this plot now i've got a bow stand right over there and a lot of times i'll actually cut some lanes kind of towards it so when the deer come out I have a good spot to shoot them again that's things you can do with these plots don't be scared to plant a small plot i mean this this corn patch right here is uh not even an acre and uh deer tear it up so do that man plant you some corn beans are easy because you can actually even just sow beans i've got some friends who will sow them instead of actually planting them if you don't have access to a planter corn kind of will do it if you sow it maybe really thin uh then it might come up and you know it see what it does typically you need to plant corn but uh i've seen it come up from being broadcast but it's i don't know what kind of years it'll make but anyway say that this is my corn plot and again you can put water on the place you need to kind of study and see what you need for each year you know in the winter time you need stuff to hold them there and so they can kind of keep that weight on after the rut especially you know bucks are kind of famished they need something to replenish that weight so you need the proper nutrition and then you need Number two, the habitat. You got to have the good protection for them. And again, it goes hand in hand with nutrition. Those two, you got to have that or the bucks and deer are going to find something else. Uh, and with the habitat, you need the does for the bucks. And so you need to work on that ratio. Again, QDMA is huge with this. Uh, and number three, genetics. Unfortunately, genetics do play a role into this. On the same hand, a spike will not always be a spike. There's countless studies of a spike turning into like a 160 inch beast a spike will only always be a spike if you kill him as a spike so that's genetics they gotta have the genetics he might max out at 140 he might max out at 180 you don't ever know but try to push them to the maximum limit give them all the things they need to get there and number four don't be that neighbor let them walk it is worth it. Yes, you might have one get killed, but I'm just telling you from personal experience, when you let one walk in the next year, he is at least 10 inches larger than he was the previous year, and you do kill him, it's a pretty amazing feeling. So guys, that's my four keys to growing big bucks. I hope you appreciate it, and I hope you learned a little something from this. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please like, share, and subscribe. I can't ask you to do that enough. And again, guys, hope everyone has an awesome year this year and a blessed day. Thank you.